Hi, I'm Cody Stewart, representing Koryu Chinati under Hanshi Patrick McCarthy. In this KU quick tip, I would like to look at Kakayuke. This technique is represented in various ways in different styles. Specifically, I would like to look at the wrist release application that is standard in KU. I'll assume we all know the circumstances under which wrists come to be seized in physical altercations, generally an attempt to control limbs within a struggle. Now let's break this down into three phases, each with two movements. So the first is a draw in, then trap, then extend, seize, release, and pull. The first step is to draw in. I want to draw in to the center and not off to the side like a normal hikite. The reason is because of what it does to his wrist. If I draw to the side, his wrist is still straight, his grip is strong. If I draw to the center and have this rolling up action, then I start to bend his wrist and start pulling against the fingers. If I'm not strong enough to draw this in, I can instead bring my body to the hand and then use my body to manipulate that connection point. The next step will be to trap. So I want to take my left hand and use it as a fulcrum, pulling up against the back of his wrist while my right forearm presses his fingers down. In this way, I've hyperextended his wrist and further compromised his grip. The next step is extension. The extension is driven entirely by the hand that has been grabbed, and that's a push. So I'm going to drive that around in an arc all the way to the point where his grip has been fully compromised. Now I don't want to try to pry this hand off with the trapping hand. So not only is that pull outwards very weak, and it's unlikely to release his grip, unlike the push from the grabbed hand, but also, even if he does let go, at this point I don't have control, and I have to be ready to follow that hand wherever he moves it and regain control. Now when I push, I'm not going to push directly back towards him because he's resisting. I'm going to step off line to the side and push sideways because he won't be able to resist that direction. Now the next step is the C's. So the trapping hand is going to ride that extension all the way around, maintaining the trap so that he can't let go until that comes far enough around that I can close my fingers around his wrist. So now we see two reasons for the extension going around in a large arc. First of all was to compromise that grip. The second reason is to push it far enough around that my trapping hand palm can turn towards his wrist and get a hold of it. So after the C's, the next step is to release. So I'm not just going to pull this hand straight out because even though his grip's been compromised, he does still have fingers closed around my wrist. I'm going to take my palm and turn it down as I roll my hand out of his opening fingers. Now the last step is to draw it in for control or into whatever technique I wish to follow up with. Now we work two positions for drawing this in. The first with the elbow into the body, represented by the front hand. The second with the wrist into the body, represented by the back hand. And they represent varying degrees of control. Now, once this connection is made, either of us has about equal control over it. As long as I keep it out here, he can move it around as much as I can. So I want to draw it into my body. Elbow in for some degree of control. Right to the wrist if I need greater control. Now for him to move this, it requires that he move my entire body and not just my arm. Let's recap those three phases. So they were draw in and trap, extend and seize, release and pull. So the responsibilities of each hand are the grabbed hand draws in and begins to work against the grip. Then it extends around in an arc until the grip is fully compromised and releases. The trapping hand traps rides that all the way around in an arc, keeps it trapped until it can seize, and pulls into control. Hopefully now you have a greater appreciation for some of the complexity in this technique. Remember that when we refer to techniques as part of our basics, that means that they are fundamental, not that they are simple. So if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and check out my page for more like it. I'm Cody Stewart. Thanks for watching this KU Quick Tip.